good afternoon everybody those who are familiar with the durga puja of west bengal know that nowadays there is a trend towards theme puja despite that the traditional pujas like these still are able to attract lots of crowds where because the old is gold now regarding endometriosis you know it's old disease it's notorious for recurrence so everybody is trying our best to reduce the recurrence and pharma companies have particularly taken it very seriously so they are trying to reduce the recurrence by promoting only only one molecule that is dianogest and every day some pharma company is coming with some newer brands of dianogest as if uh, they are uh, making us believe that endometriosis is a condition of dianogest deficiency so if you implement the universal dianogest replacement therapy you are going to cure endometriosis so they are claiming that GnRH agonist is the era of past, so GnRH agonist should be kept in museum. But is it so? Well, there is at least one area where GnRH agonist can, ne can never be replaced by any other molecules. That is in endometriosis in IVF where before embryo transfer, you have to give three to six cycles of GnRH agonist as recommended by the ESRE guideline. And the Cochrane review suggested that if you give GnRH agonist, your pregnancy rates will be increased by fourfold. Now back to basics. GnRH agonist, as you know, it's a decapeptide consists of 10 amino acids, of which the amino acid in six position is very vital because if you replace these six amino acids, then the molecule will be resistant to enzymatic degradation. As a result, there will be increased affinity towards the GnRH receptors. And the next mechanism you know that is initially there will be flare of gonadotrophin release followed by prolonged down regulation because the, the receptors will be desensitized. But there may be some unknown mechanisms because the GnRH agonists have found to have direct effects on the uterus, the ovaries and endometrium uh, independent of the pituitary reaction. So there may be some unknown mechanisms which we don't know till now. Now, I will say GnRH agonist is not an example of very good quality research because there is no, no adequate dose finding studies. So there is no evidence that one particular uh, molecule is superior to another or any particular route like intranasal, intramuscular or subcutaneous is preferred to another. Now, safety profile, you know GnRH agonists are well known for hypoestrogenic side effects like low libido, hot flush, vaginal dryness, etc. And we are very much concerned about the bone mineral density loss, yet it does cause bone mineral density loss, but it's totally reversible within one to two years after the, after the stoppage of the therapy. Now, coming to case-based discussion, 18 years old girl presented with severe dysmenorrhea, 2 cm endometrioma. You know, my previous speaker has already discussed about the, about the adolescent management of adolescent endometriosis. That is where the, the fertility is not the immediate concern. So you can start with NSAID and go for hormone therapy. If not responding or there is large endometrioma, you can go for laparoscopy. But it's important to keep the patient on regular follow-up because endometriosis is well known for recurrence. Now, according to ESRI guideline, there is no uh, such recommendation that any particular hormone therapy is superior to another. So you can use anyone depending on the cost, availability, the side effect and the patient preferences. Now, what's about GnRH? Is the evidences are suggesting that GnRH agonists are having worse side effect profiles and they are inferior to LNG IUS or Dinazole. Having said that, this study, they found that GnRH agonist along with ADBEC therapy is quite acceptable in adolescents and there is no increased risk of risk of uh, the, the osteoporosis or bone mineral density loss because you are giving the ADBEC therapy. So in this condition, even the GnRH agonist can be considered in adolescents also. Now case number two, lady presented with severe dysmenorrhea, the, the, the MRI suggested the possibility of deep rectosigmoid endometriosis and there is large endometrioma. So the Management is essentially surgical, but this lady wants to defer surgery for three to four months because of professional commitments. What will you do? Will you give hormone therapy? Hormone therapy does not improve the surgical outcome and you can consider hormone therapy while the lady is waiting for surgery to reduce the preoperative pain, but hormone therapy cannot reduce the postoperative pain. Having said that, be honest, almost all of us are advising hormone therapy before surgery to with the hope that it, it will reduce the inflammation, vascularization and adhesion. 
Accordingly, the NICE guideline, this is one of the newest guidelines uh, published in 2017, they suggested that you should seriously consider GnRH agonist, no other molecules, only GnRH agonist three doses before contemplating surgery for bowel or bladder endometriosis. Now the same lady underwent laparoscopy in expert hand, not by me, so there was complete clearance. Now the lady does not want to uh, get pregnant within next two to three years. So what will you do? Although in, it's a common practice to give two to three doses of GnRH agonist post-op, it does not make any sense because it does not reduce the risk of recurrence. On the other hand, if you give hormone therapy for a long time, like for six to 12, more than six months, it will significantly reduce the risk of post-operative relapse. But here the GnRH agonist is little in the back foot because uh, the LNG IUS or the oral contraceptive pills uh, are, are preferred to GnRH agonist. However, this prospective cohort study, they found that GnRH agonist along with ADBEC therapy is having similar e efficacy just like Dynogest in reduction of post-operative uh, recurrence and the bone mineral density loss was not significantly different in between these two groups. So you still can consider GnRH agonist in, in, in post-operative therapy, but you have to give for long term. Now, case number three, this lady has been trying uh, for pregnancy. So uh, complaining of, of infertility, there is severe dysmenorrhea and large endometrioma. So that the management is again essentially surgical because it has been found that Resection of peritoneal endometriosis, cystectomy for ovarian endometrioma, and deep endometriosis all improve the chance of natural conception. But what about hormonal therapy? Please remember in a lady who is planning for pregnancy, hormone therapy will not allow her to get pregnant or hormone therapy is contraindicated. So, and ovarian suppression uh, before starting fertility treatment will not improve the chance of natural conception. So only treat a role of hormone therapy in the context of infertility is that when you are advising IVF or laparoscopy, but the lady wants to defer them because of some other commitments only in that case. So hormone therapy is not recommended in women with endometriosis having infertility. What's about post-op hormone therapy? Please remember immediately after the after the surgery is the best time to conceive so if you give hormone therapy after surgery you are basically delaying the conception so please do not advise post-operative hormone therapy in a lady with endometriosis and infertility now this lady finally underwent laparoscopy and all the clearance were done so what's the next step GnRH agonist is a big no-no here you should ask the lady to, to try hard for pregnancy after the operation and if she cannot conceive within six months, you should seriously consider super ovulation with IUI and the ISTA guidelines has seriously su uh, suggested that you should seriously consider IUI with super ovulation uh, if she fails to conceive within six months, provided that all other factors are normal because it improves the chance of pregnancy. Now this lady, according to your advice, underwent six cycles of IUI. Now she opted for IVF. Incidentally, there is a large endometrioma, but minimal dysmenorrhea. Will you go for surgery? Please remember surgery will improve the chance of natural conception, but surgery will never improve the chance of pregnancy after IVF. So in the context of IVF in endometriosis, only role of surgery is that when there is intractable pain or, or when the ovum pickup is difficult, that is you think that your ovaries will not be accessible to the needle. Again, the same slide that I've shown before, that is, before embryo transfer, you have to give three to six cycles of GnRH agonist in endometriosis to improve the chance of pregnancy. How you can give it? Either you can give it before stimulation, you give GnRH agonist three to six cycles, then start stimulation, but it will tend to increase the gonadotropin consumption and increase the cost. So the most cost-effective treatment is traditional antagonist protocol, freeze all the embryos, give GnRH agonist for three to six cycles and go for frozen embryo transfer. And there is no evidence that GnRH antagonist protocol is inferior to agonist protocol in endometriosis for IVF. Now this lady presumed that it has been done by me, me like, like some novice person. So there was no clearance. So the person who thought that laparoscopy should be done, but he could not do anything. So ultimately the lady was advised IVF. The before IVF, although it's not recommended, but she received two doses of GnRH agonist. What will you do? You just utilize this GnRH agonist and make it as long protocol and start stimulation. 
So the ISRA guidelines suggested that after surgery, if you start IVF immediately after surgery, the, the, the success rate of IVF is not altered. So there is no contraindication to IVF after surgery. So basically, when a lady presents with infertility, with endometriosis, you should assess all the other factors and assess a chance of conceiving naturally. If the natural conception is possible, assess the level of pain. If there is severe pain, go for laparoscopy and depending on the findings at laparoscopy, whether early or advanced endometriosis, you should go for further fertility treatment like ovulation induction, IUI or in severe cases, IVF. On the other hand, if there is no pain, in that case, you have to individualize the treatment, whether you should go for traditional fertility treatment or whether you should go off for laparoscopy. On the other hand, if the chance of natural pregnancy is, uh, there is no chance of natural pregnancy, she needs IVF for uh, uh, IVF otherwise, like there is male factor, there is tubal factor, there is poor ovarian reserve, go for IVF. In this case, offer surgery only if there is severe pain or difficulty in accessing the follicles. But here you have to give the NRH agonies three to six months before embryo transfer. So in a nutshell, GNRH agonist provides an acceptable and effective treatment modality for endometriosis. It's very effective in pain management and significantly improves the pregnancy rate in IVF. So before IVF, GNRH agonist is a must. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.